All right, welcome back, everybody. So we spent a long time going over homework problems. We're just going to get through a couple uh, slides here. Ooh, this is kind of a lengthy one. So we better get moving tomorrow to finish the notes, but we'll see. And I play by ear. Okay, so uh, section 2.6 is limits at infinity. You know, every limit that we have talked about thus far has been the limit as x approaches some number a, right? Limit as x approaches 2, limit as x approaches 5, limit as x approaches 10, whatever. It's been a finite value, right? It's been a finite value. So what we're going to be working here is taking a look at, well, what happens if I make x really big? What happens if I make x really small? That's what we're going to be looking at. In sections 2, 2, and 2, 4, we investigated infinite limits and vertical asymptotes. Now, we are going to have to be very careful about talking about infinite limits and limits at infinity. Those are two very different things. Infinite limits are when the output is infinity. Like the limit as x approaches 2 is infinity means, oh, that, that's a vertical asymptote at 2. However, the limit at infinity is very different. The output is infinity when I talk about the limit as x goes to some number equals infinity, right? The input is infinity when I talk about limits at infinity. So I'm going to be saying the limit as x goes to infinity. The limit as x gets really, really big. Or the limit as x goes to go something really, really small. In this section, we will let x become arbitrarily large or arbitrarily small and see what happens to the y value. A lot of the times, the y value also gets infinitely big or infinitely small. But sometimes the y value levels off. And what we're talking about there is a vertical asymptote. Or sorry, excuse me, horizontal asymptote. Uh, let's begin by investigating the behavior of this function. If I gave you, the, gave you this in chapter one, I would say, where is my horizontal asymptote? Where would you say the horizontal asymptote would be? At one, right? Because what, what about the degrees here? Is this top heavy or bottom heavy? No, it's equal, so therefore you take the leading coefficients and divide them. So one over one, you know that the horizontal asymptote algebraically should end up at one, right? That means it, as I go to the right or to the left, it should level off at one. No matter how big or small I make x, the y values are going to level out, are going to get closer and closer and closer to some value. Oh, wait, that's the idea of a limit, isn't it? That's the idea of a limit. So what is my limit then? Well, take a look. This is the function as, as it looks like on the graph. As I get bigger and bigger and bigger with my x values, the y value, value is going to level off to get closer and closer and closer to 1. Look, no matter if it's positive or negative, because it's squared, it's going to happen the same way. This is uh, even symmetry, right? Um, as I keep making my values bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, it's going to get closer and closer and closer and closer to 1. Is it ever going to reach 1? No. But it's going to get closer and closer and closer to 1. Okay? In this statement, or in this, in this particular problem, we can say that the limit as x goes to infinity, and this is how we would write that, the limit as x goes to infinity of this function is equal to 1. And that's the key difference between talking about the limit as x uh, going to some number is equal to infinity in contrast with the limit as x goes to infinity. The infinity is down here when we're looking at, okay, what's happening on the right side or what's happening on the left side? That's really what we're looking at here. What's happening on the right side or what's happening on the left side? Well, on the right side, it's leveling off to 1. So the limit as x goes to infinity of this function is 1. I could also say the limit as x goes to negative infinity is also 1. Okay, So here's our intuitive definition of a limit. Let f be a function defined on some interval a to infinity, then the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is equal to L. That means that the values of f of x can be made arbitrarily close to L by requiring x to be sufficiently large. Here are some diagrams for you that show when the limit would exist going to infinity. You're really going to have to resi resist the urge to say and beyond after I, after I say all these problems. 
the limit going to infinity. Okay. Because <laughs> that's really what we're looking at here. Uh, we're saying we're letting x go to infinity or negative infinity. Right? We're making x get really, really big or really, really small. Honestly, what am I looking at here? I'm investigating the end behavior. Right? I'm really investigating the end behavior. You know, back in Algebra 2, when I taught this to you, or when whoever taught this to you, um, we said as x, oops, as x goes to in oh geez, come on, write it, write it properly. As x goes to infinity, f of x does something, right? And then as x goes to negative infinity, f of x does something. And we said, okay, what does that mean? We said on the right side, the function goes up or down, because we just studied this in, poly in the polynomials chapter. And we knew that it was either just going to go up or down. That was the whole end behavior dance thing, right? And we said on the right side, the function goes, and then we could either say positive infinity or negative infinity, function going up or function going down, right? And then we would say on the left side, the function goes up or down, right? We were doing limits and we didn't even know it yet. This statement can be replaced by this. The limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is, and then we can finish that statement. Or contrast it with the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x is some value, right? So we can discuss end behavior by writing it as a limit rather than this weird funky statement that we had to use because we didn't know what limits were yet. You know, we were doing limits, but we didn't even really know we were doing it just quite yet. Okay. Um, now that's when the limit is going to go to infinity using polynomials like up or down. Uh, that that's when the limit is going to go to infinity, infinity and infinity. Like if I make X really, really big, it's going to go up or down positive infinity or negative infinity. This, when we have a horizontal asymptote, that's when it's equal to a number. That's when I say, okay, it's gonna let, it's not gonna keep going, get keep on getting big or small. It's gonna level off to a certain value, to a certain number. Okay. Um, take a look here. An example of a curve with two horizontal asymptotes is inverse tangent of x. Take a look at inverse tangent of x. Um, hey, tangent of x is still on the board here, right? We had vertical asymptotes of tangent of x, right? That means if I take the inverse, I'm going to have horizontal asymptotes. Where? Well, where the vertical asymptotes were occurring on regular tangent. And that was pi over 2 and every 90 degrees past that, right? Okay. So what are we seeing here? We're saying we can make this statement because we had horizontal asymptotes on inverse tangent of x. The limit as x goes to negative infinity of inverse tangent of x, well, where is my horizontal asymptote down here, negative pi over 2. The limit as x goes to positive infinity of inverse tangent of x is pi over 2. Okay, I'm just showing you another example that you probably know already, inverse tangent, that graph of inverse tangent, and knowing that there were vertical asymptotes every pi over 2 of regular tangent, if I take the inverse of that, those flip into horizontal asymptotes. Because we studied what the limit would look like here. So if I flip it and do the inverse of that, well, horizontal asymptotes are going to look like this, where you have the limit as x goes to infinity is, or the limit as x goes to negative infinity is, whatever that value is. In inverse tangents case, it's negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, and then every rotation beyond that. Okay. So let's take a look here. We're going to find a couple things. We're going to find infinite limits. Limits at infinity, because again, we're going to make that distinction between what those mean. Those phrases look very similar, but they do not mean the same thing. We're going to talk about infinite limits, limits at infinity, and then asymptotes. Why are we going to discuss asymptotes? Well, because that ties in with limits at infinity and infinite limits. Let's go in order. Let's find the infinite limits. Okay. Let's find the in infinite limits. Well... Infinite limits are vertical asymptotes. So let's write my vertical asymptotes as well. Where do my vertical asymptotes happen? 
It's like negative one and two at X equals negative one and at X equals two. Okay, what does that mean? That means the limit as X goes to negative one, oops, sorry, negative one, sorry, negative one of this function. Well, what is the limit as X goes to negative one? Positive infinity. Okay. Now, what is the limit as X goes to two? of f of x. It doesn't exist. So how can we refine our statement to show that there's a vertical asymptote? Maybe do that. And if I make that statement, where does it go? Negative infinity. On the left side of 2, this goes to negative infinity. Is that enough to say that there's a vertical asymptote there? Yeah. Yeah, that's totally enough. That was one of the statements that says, okay, yeah, there's a vertical asymptote. I mean, I feel like, like I really want to write the other one too, though. Like the limit as x goes to 2 from the right of f of x. Okay, that's positive infinity. I don't know. I feel like it would be incomplete without writing that. Technically, no, but I don't know. So what did I just wrote right there? These were the infinite limits, ones that the output is infinity, one that, that the y value is infinity. And those relate directly to the vertical asymptote. Okay, I'm going to change colors because now we're switching gears. Now we're going to say, what are the limits at infinity? Okay, now that goes right into the horizontal asymptotes. Where are the horizontal asymptotes? I see two horizontal asymptotes, one at 2 and one at Four at y equals 2 and y equals 4. Okay, how do we make those statements then? Well, is it on the left side or the right side where it goes to 2? On the left side, right? On the left side of this graph, as, as I make x get infinitely small, it's going to level up to 2. So we can say the limit as x goes to negative infinity, uh, I should really write that a little clearer, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x is 2. That's how you show a horizontal asymptote. And that statement is saying, on the left side, the function leveled off to 2. And then we can say, well, I see that on the right side as it goes to positive infinity as I make x infinitely large it's going to level off to 4 okay so what did I state there that was the horizontal asymptotes and the limits at infinity the limits at infinity when I talk about limits at infinity that's when the inf infinity sign goes down below the limit, and you're making x go to there. When I talk about the infinite limits, that's when the limit is going to equal infinity. Okay. Let's stop there. Sound good? Yeah. Sound good. All right. That was a good day.